do you choose the coil that's best for you? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Hannah and I'm a sexual health nurse. If you're new, welcome. If you've come back to watch more of my videos, thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, for more sexual health, contraception and relationship advice. Today, what we're gonna talk about is the coil, also known as the intrauterine device. Now, I have a couple here to show you, um, but I will go into them in a little bit more detail. This is one of the perks, actually, of working in a sexual health clinic. It's absolutely brilliant. So here, I've got a little uterus. Let me show you the story of the uterus. It literally looks like a little book. We're gonna go into that a little bit later. Um, so stay tuned. So what is the intrauterine device or the coil? I'll refer to it as the coil because it's slightly easier to say throughout the, uh, the video, but um, the proper name for it is intrauterine device or IUD. The coil is a T-shaped device and it sits within the uterus and acts as a form of contraception to prevent you from getting pregnant. Really important, it does not prevent you against sexually transmitted infections. So condoms are always the way forward in terms of preventing STIs. If you wanna know the correct way to apply a condom, what type of lube to use, please look at my other video, it's live now, um, and you can watch this after this one. There are two different types of coils. The main difference is that there is a copper coil which contains no hormone. Also a hormonal coil which ca contains progesterone. So if you're somebody that doesn't want any hormones, then the copper coil would be fantastic for you. But I'm gonna tell you the differences between them now. Oh, oh, it's so tiny, it's really fiddly. So this is the copper coil. This one is a 10 year coil. The way that I know that is this is the body of the coil and these are the arms. The body always has copper on it. So if you had a five year coil, then the copper would be along the body. The 10 year coil, the copper is also in the arms. So this coil can be in place for 10 years, but you can also get a slightly different one that's in place for five years. So if you're planning a pregnancy within the five, next five years, then maybe go for uh, the five year coil. But to be honest, it really doesn't matter. How does the copper coil work? Well, actually it works by being toxic to sperm. So it kills the sperm before it reaches an egg to be able to fertilize it. It's also used as a type of emergency contraception that it prevents a fertilized egg from embedding into the uterus. Now, the main side effect of the copper coil is that it can make your period longer, slightly more painful and um, heavier. So if you're somebody that tends to have quite a light bleed anyway, this might not actually be a bad contraception for you to go on. It would be absolutely fantastic. Your bleed just might become slightly heavier. People that have really heavy clotty periods already that are already quite painful, this might not be the best type of coil to go on because it's well known for making that worse. If however you wanna give it a go and just see how your body reacts, Perfect. We can fit this device and if you find that your bleeds become unbearable, then we just remove it and we could insert a, a hormonal coil if you prefer. You need to allow your body a good three to six months to get used to your coil and to adapt to the new environment that it's in. So you are expecting within the first three months to have some irregular bleeding um, and for your body to be a little bit all over the place until it starts to settle down. The other coil is the hormonal coil. This is a progesterone based coil. And what it does is it sits in the uterus and acts locally. So the aim of it is to thin the lining of your womb. It also thickens the cervical mucus, which acts as a physical barrier to sperm. In some people, a small, a small majority of people, um, it prevents them from ovulating. This is not the main way that it works and most women actually continue to ovulate on the hormonal coil. So if you're somebody that has quite heavy clotty periods that are really long, it's actually a fantastic contraception to be on because the likelihood is, is that you're gonna see a huge reduction in your bleeds. Some people completely stop bleeding. For some patients, they absolutely love this because they don't like having a period, it's an inconvenience. For other people, they like to have a regular bleed just to confirm that they're not pregnant. It's important to stress that if you're on any type of hormonal contraception, if you are having a bleed, 
it is not counted as a period. So it is not ruling out pregnancy. Less than one in a hundred women will get pregnant in a year on the intrauterine device. And it's a great form of contraception in terms of preventing pregnancy. It's important to stress it does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. With the hormonal uh, coil, it sits in the uterus and it acts locally. It can, however, get into the system, so go systemically. So some people do find that they can get headaches and breast tenderness on this coil. These tend to settle down with time, so be patient. And not everybody experiences these symptoms. It is not known for causing weight gain. Some people say that they did put on weight after having the coil fitted, but the evidence just isn't there to suggest it. Right, now it's time for my little uterus. Here's my uterus. So, some of you will already know this, but I'm going to go over it for those of you who don't or who need a little bit more information. This is your uterus. These here are your ovaries. You then have your fallopian tubes that lead into the uterus. The uterus then comes down into the um, cervical canal and the cervix. Below the cervix is the vagina. That's where you have sex. Where the coil sits is it sits in the uterus. It sits in the uterus here. The way that it's inserted is through the cervix. What we would do to insert the coil is we would get a speculum to hold open the vagina and to be able to view the cervix. After we view, can view the cervix, we would get a little instrument just to hold onto the cervix so that when we're fitting the device, it's not moving around and having a little party there. We can fit it really effectively. We will then apply some local anesthetic gel around the cervix and into the cervical os, which is this little hole here. Once we have applied the local anesthetic gel, a measuring device will be inserted into the uterus and that will measure how big your uterus is and where we're going to fit the coil. That's then removed and we then fit the coil. The coil is fitted, I haven't got the device, I should have brought it with me, but it's fitted in through the cervix. What happens is these arms are either bent downwards or they're bent upwards. They tend to be bent upwards. It gets inserted through the cervix and then the arms pop out into the uterus. If you can see, there's some strings that will hang down through the cervical os, which is the little hole in your cervix and into the vagina. They won't be this long into the vagina. They'll be about two to three centimeters. These strings are kind of like fish wire. They're quite soft um, and they're basically used as a little grip that when we want to pull the, uh, pull the coil up, we hold onto it with the device and we pull it straight out. It is so quick to remove. The aim also of the strings is that you can feel for your coil. Ideally, you want to be doing this once a month after your bleed, if you have one. On the copper coil, great, you should probably still have one. On the progesterone only method, you might not have one. If for any reason you can't feel your coil strings, it's really important to not rely on your coil for contraception and to come and see us in clinic so that we can check that your device is in place. Normally what happens is the strings will curl around the cervix and you just can't feel them. But it's nothing to worry about, absolutely fine. The strings take a little bit of time to soften up, so your partner may feel them just after the fitting whilst you're having sex. If they are, then you can use a condom as a barrier method to act as a little bit of a um, cushion to the penis. The other option is, is that you can insert a finger into the vagina and use your finger to curl them uh, the strings around your cervix and then they won't be feeling them. It is not normal to feel them. People don't tend to feel them. On the day of your fitting, what you're going to want to do about an hour or two before is take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, ibuprofen, alongside some paracetamol. You can take whatever pain relief works for you, absolutely fine, but it's important to take some pain relief. The procedure will be uncomfortable. We know it's uncomfortable, but it will be over and done with within about five minutes. Next thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that you eat. So a lot of people forget to eat or they don't eat because they're feeling nervous. What we do know is that when we go through the cervical os, which is the little hole in the cervix, um, it can cause some people to feel dizzy and potentially faint. We are more than prepared for that. We tend to have somebody else in the room with you, um, a healthcare assistant, a nurse, just to make sure that you're okay during the procedure. 
it's a normal body reaction and nothing to worry about. But if you haven't eaten, then obviously you're gonna start to feel a little bit faint and yucky anyway before we even start fitting the coil. Please bring a sanitary pad and some sensible underwear because as we're fitting the coil, we can cause you to bleed. It's completely normal, it's nothing to worry about, but obviously if you're not wearing underwear, then it's not gonna be that great when you're leaving. The last thing is, is that we would advise for you to have somebody to come and pick you up to take you home. The reason being is that you might feel a little bit faint and yucky um, after having the coil fitted and crampy. So it's not that fun to drive home. Some risks associated with the procedure and with getting a coil. There is a less than two in a thousand chance of perforation. This means that as the device is being fitted or after the device has been fitted, it can create a small hole in your uterus. If this happens, you tend to be quite unwell. So people can vomit, they can get severe abdominal pain. You will know that something's wrong. If that does happen, then you'll need some keyhole surgery to rectify the problem. But it's really important to stress that this is really unlikely. Perforation is actually most risky within the first 36 weeks postpartum. So if you've just had a baby and you're within the first 36 weeks, then your risk is slightly higher but the overall risk is still really small. Probably the highest risk of the procedure is expulsion. This means that your body rejects the coil. It is a foreign body sitting in your cervix and your, uh, well, you're not your cervix, sitting in your uterus. So of course, some people's bodies don't like that and they start to reject it. You tend to have quite a lot of abdominal pain and some heavy bleeding associated with that, but that's why it's also really important to feel for your coil. If at any point, you can feel the coil body and not just the strings. That's when you'd want to call us straight away so that we can bring you into clinic and whip that coil out and put a new one in if that's what you want. Expulsion is most likely to happen within the first year of getting your coil fitted and specifically within the first three months. Another risk, which is about one in a thousand women, can experience an ectopic pregnancy. Now, as I said, the coil is really effective as a form of contraception. So the overall risk is really slim. When you are trying to conceive naturally and get pregnant, um, you are also potentially at risk of having an ectopic pregnancy. Because with the coil, your risk of getting pregnant is so low, the overall risk of having an ectopic pregnancy is lower than that of if you were trying to get pregnant naturally. Now, an ectopic pregnancy, in case you weren't aware, is a pregnancy that grows outside of the uterus. It tends to be in the fallopian tubes. So if I get my little um, uterus here, the ectopic pregnancies tend to implant here, which is not possible for the pregnancy to be viable and to continue into a successful full-term pregnancy. It can cause massive risks to the patient. So you would need to potentially have some surgery to rectify that. So the last risk that I'm gonna talk about is the risk of infection. This is less than two in a thousand women will get an infection after having their device fitted. Um, and it's most commonly caused by a uh, STI, so chlamydia or gonorrhea. We will get you to do a vaginal swab to detect for chlamydia and gonorrhea and treat you as appropriate if it comes back positive. That reduces your risk of infection. If within the first few weeks after having your device fitted, you start to feel like you've got a temperature, you start to get some abdominal pain, you get a smelly discharge that's different to normal, you'd want to call us up and for us to check for any infection and to treat you because it could become, you could become quite unwell with it. Please do be aware though that all our instruments that we use are sterilized, they're completely clean, and we use a sterile aseptic technique. So we are doing our best to prevent you from getting an infection. Now it's completely normal to have some abdominal cramping within the first few months of having your coil fitted, but if it's not settling down and it's getting worse, that's when we'd be starting to worry about infection. Right, I think that's everything you need to know about the um, copper and the hormonal coil or the IUD. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Please do not let your friends or family influence your decision on contraception. What might work for me and be absolutely fantastic might be horrendous for you. So it's a personal journey about finding out what works best for you. 
Thanks guys, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please like and subscribe and I will have another video for you in two weeks on a Wednesday. Take care, bye-bye.